There was a time when a random jump scare in a non-horror video game was to be expected. Retrospectively, that doesn't feel true, but the amount of titles that had disturbing imagery or sequences out of nowhere has stuck with millions of us over the years. I'm talking the eel in Super Mario 64, the moon in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, or seeing one of Minecraft's witches glaring at you through your own bedroom window in the middle of the night. Sometimes the scare level or experience is more effective and far more memorable because you really had no idea it was coming. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are the 9 scariest moments in non-horror video games. Number 9. Monster Ark Gives Chase 2004's Spider-Man 2 had some great swinging, but if we're talking full games worth of quality, it's Neversoft who deserved the crown for the best Spider-Man game before Insomniac's 2018 version blew it out the water. Introduced by Stan Lee himself and featuring cameos from everyone including Daredevil to the Punisher, the Human Torch to Captain America, the script was tight as hell and this title's heart was in the right place. Every beat of Spider-Man on PS1 was like playing the game version of the 1994 animated series, and clearly the devs were huge Spidey fans wanting you to have as much fun as possible. That was until you come across their all-out disturbing take on Carnage. While the fight against Cletus Cassidy's symbiote is freaky enough, watching it latch onto Doc Ock results in 110% pure nightmare fuel. Screaming die as Monster Ock pursues you through some corridors while Otto's former base collapses, the fang teeth and oozing appearance of this creature is straight up horrifying. If he manages to catch you, Monster Ark will just rip Spidey apart limb from limb, off camera of course, while still screeching pained screams into your face. Number 8. The Flood Helmet Recording Halo Combat Evolved the perfect candidate for a game you forgot handled horror supremely well, the original Halo's slow introduction of the menacing Flood predated the first-person horror boom by a full decade. Obviously, Bungie's work was firmly rooted in being a first-person shooter, but descending down into ancient alien ruins and finding the helmet of a deceased soldier was the perfect way to show you their last moments alive. Also predating the found footage genre across the 2000s, Bungie show you a select few memories of one Private Jenkins, as they too arrived above the silent cartographer to see what lurked below. The genius here comes from just how ambitious the team were. Remember, this was 2001. The sky was the limit in regards to representing filmic techniques like a jump scare or found recordings in video games. As Bungie take their time, you know that something has to come along and kill Jenkins and his crew. Eventually, glimpsed through a doorway before a full attack all but wipes out the squad, we see the flood pour into the room, swarming the UNSC and taking out Jenkins. Coming back to the modern day as Master Chief, you've just been introduced to one of Halo's most iconic enemies. Number 7. Pulling the Lever Bioshock Infinite Again, the best, most effective, and most memorable jump scares come out of nowhere. I'd wager you can't quote every line of Bioshock Infinite's ending back to me, but you damn well remember pulling a random lever, turning to continue with the level, and having a boy of silence right there center frame. The genius of this comes from encountering the boys themselves beforehand in a silent room. Like with any similar setup, the assumption is to not wake them, because who even knows what power you'll unleash. Do so and you can fight some of the boys in this room, emerging victorious in a hail of bullets and superpowers, but once you're out the other side, again you'd assume the nightmare is over. Not today, yells Ken Levine, as regardless of your approach beforehand, one of these boys will always make it through and scream right in your face when you least expect it. Number 6. Overlord Mass Effect 2 Sadly, Overlord's full plot description is firmly rooted in the ugly, outdated 2000s trope of those with special needs somehow having special powers. But divorcing that element if you can, the mission overall is a marked change from everything else in Mass Effect history. Available as DLC for Mass Effect 2 or bundled into the new Legendary Edition, Overlord introduced you to Simon Archer, a scientist who states he and his brother were trying to find a way to communicate directly with the robotic Geth. As primary antagonists of the first game, though only because they could be so easily programmed or indoctrinated in theory, Archer states that his brother volunteered to meld minds with their research, but he turned into something else in the process. As the level plays out, you get glimpses of a digitized human face, struggling to speak through various monitors. It seems Gavin's brother Richard has become the Overlord AI itself, until a twist reveals that Gavin instead coerced and forced Richard into the experiment, as the latter is actually autistic and relies on his brother for support. Again, there's a lot of material here that's aged terribly, but as the gradual reveal of a human science experiment gone wrong, the atmosphere, sound cues, and overall reveal are very well done. 
Number 5. Missing Stealth Prototypes Metal Gear Solid Sadly, with each passing year, we get further away from the East meets West tonality and franchise feel of Metal Gear Solid. Hideo Kojima's 90s masterpiece changed the course of gaming and proved that the medium could directly contend with Hollywood. However, one of the most memorable parts is often overlooked. The genuine white-knuckle terror of realizing someone else is in the room with you. Coming as Snake is trying to descend a tower following a boss battle, the weight limit for the elevator keeps mysteriously going off. Helper character Otacon calls to mention that he had some stealth prototypes that appear to have gone missing. It's here where some excellent creeping music slowly rises underneath the conversation, leading to Otacon's avatar on the codec getting right in your face and yelling, look out, the guys who stole my stealth prototypes are in there with you. You're then thrust into the tightest encounter in the whole game, but the sequence is masterfully done. An early indicator that Kojima knows how to do very effective horror and something he'd eventually carry into PT. Number 4. The Drowning Music Sonic the Hedgehog Play even the first few notes of this specific drowning theme and an entire generation of players will need to step outside for some fresh air. Such is the effectiveness of how Sega handled going underwater, that if you can't find a bubble of air fast enough, the music will rise in tempo until Sonic literally drowns. Besides being a bummer in the moment, everything about underwater zones in Sonic are completely anathema to why the brand took off in the first place, and why millions of us fell in love with the franchise's gameplay. The key word is of course speed. Something you lose completely when underwater. It meant areas like the Labyrinth Zone would only go on to be feared and hated in equal measure, a staple of the IP that I don't think anyone actually enjoys. Number 3. Shalebridge Cradle Thief Deadly Shadows Ion Storm's stealth masterpiece was firmly rooted in the stealth genre, but it's precisely because you thought you knew what to expect that Shalebridge Cradle is so damn terrifying. Changing genre on a dime, now you are slowly exploring a dank, decrepit asylum, one murky corridor at a time. Excellently atmospheric sound design comes with pockets of distant noises and flickering lights, hinting at the idea that you're not alone. With the level almost entirely in pitch black, text entries from doctors or patients are the only thing keeping you company in between light sources and occasional zombie attacks. Eidos would pay tribute to this level in 2014's Thief, maintaining the eerie atmosphere but also opening the orphanage turned asylum with a demonic face staring at you through the first keyhole. Number 2. Sephiroth's Introduction Final Fantasy VII it might sound strange to those whose first introduction to the Final Fantasy VII mythos was 2020's opulent remake, but the original Final Fantasy VII had more than a tinge of horror throughout. Imposing nuclear reactors came with a unique industrial-infused soundtrack, creating a feeling of genuine unease and fear as you attempted to sabotage one of Shinra's plans in the intro. By the time you got to Shinra HQ and had seen firsthand some of their experiments, being broken out of prison by a mysterious figure leaving behind a trail of blood and bodies sets up the game's ultimate reveal. None other than Final Fantasy VII's legendary antagonist Sephiroth was your mysterious benefactor, and his parting gift is murdering the Shinra president, leaving his sword sticking out the guy's back. Sadly, FF7 Remake ditched all of this stuff, and while its narrative pacing and general feel is far more in line with how Final Fantasy VII feels today as a franchise, its humble beginnings are still very powerful today. And number 1. Man Bat's First Appearance Batman Arkham Knight Way more games should make use of open world spaces for horrifying visuals and effective jump scares. The fact that we're exploring a large given space at our own pace frees up all sorts of expectations on when or how a creature, sound effect or whatever else might appear. Step forward then Batman Arkham Knight, a divisive enough game story-wise that absolutely nailed its reveal of the fearsome Man Bat. Handled in any other way, the very character of a reverse Batman would have been a laughingstock. Here though, Man Bat appears on a rooftop and once again gets right in your face, after you've manually grappled to a random building's ledge. Finding out all of Kirk Langstrom's story and how he turned into this creature of the night is some icing on the cake, but the initial what the hell is happening oh god style feeling is the sort of jump scare dedicated horror games dream of. And those are my picks for the 9 scariest moments in non-horror video games. Honestly, I'm still recovering from Monster Ark. Let me know your own favourites down in the comments below and please get subscribed to the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.